Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to introduce the different types of keyframe interpolation in Blender 2.8 and how they can be controlled using the Dope Editor and Graph Editor. The Graph Editor is a very powerful tool which allows the style of your animation to be carefully refined to give you the exact result you would like. Before we start, we'll need to change the default interpolation type for animation. This is found in User Preferences, which is under Edit, Preferences, Animation, and then Default Interpolation. We're going to set it to Linear and then click Save Preferences. To start off with creating the animation, I'm going to use the default cube and just create a simple animation whereby it moves left and right. To do this, I'm going to press I and then select Location, and then jump to frame 60 on the timeline, G, X, and 4, and then insert another location keyframe, then jump to frame 120, G, X, minus 4, and insert the final keyframe, and then I'm going to set the end of the animation to be frame 120. Now, when we press the spacebar to play the scene, We'll see it moving left and right and then looping as soon as it hits the end. Now to change the interpolation type in a scene, we need to go to the animation tab at the top. This will bring up the dope sheet at the bottom of the screen. Each of these circles is a keyframe. We can press A to select all keyframes and then go to key and interpolation mode and you'll see a wealth of options. The three main options are these constant, linear and bezier options which look like this. You see that linear has no acceleration Bezier smooths out the movement so it speeds up and slows down, and Constant immediately jumps to the keyframe once it is reached with no interpolation at all. There are also special modes, namely Back, Bounce and Elastic, which are much more stylized but can be useful in certain kinds of animation. The other way to alter interpolation modes is the Graph Editor. I'm going to open the Graph Editor in this side panel. You'll see that the X animation has a line and the Y and Z have no animation so they're a flat line. Because it's set to linear, it's a straight line with no change in gradient. If we set the mode to bezier, you'll see that it has these bezier curves and these handles which can be moved at the end. These handles can be moved so that the animation style is changed. For example, we can select the start one and move the handle so that the animation will start off very quickly and then slow down once it reaches the end. This is what that looks like. Another feature of the graph editor is adding modifiers to keyframes. To do this, we need to select a keyframe field on the left hand side, so I'm going to select the Z axis, press N to bring up the side panel, and then choose modifiers, and add modifier and noise. You'll see that this has added a sort of distortion pattern to the keyframe line, and when we press play, it's jittering between high and low. Adjusting the scale, adjust it along the X axis, and strength along the Y axis. So strength is how far it moves from its equilibrium position, and scale is how fast it moves. Depth increases the resolution of the noise. You can also add a different modifier called Limits underneath the Noise modifier and then use Minimum Y and Maximum Y to set limits at which the Noise modifier will be cut off. A different modifier can be used called Stepped Interpolation. This will quantize the movement into discrete steps and increasing the step size will make it more jittered. When you play the animation, you'll see that it's almost like you have lots of different keyframes all set to constant interpolation. A more realistic use of this technique is in animating a field, such as the strength of a light. I'm going to create a simple emission shader for this cube, go into rendered view, set the strength to 10 and then press I to insert a keyframe. I'm also going to turn on bloom. Now when we go to the animation tab and go into the graph editor, you'll see a straight line at the value of 10 where the strength is set. We can then add a noise modifier to this, increase the scale and increase the strength, and when we go into rendered view, it will give a flickering effect. We can also add limits, which will make it have a maximum and minimum flicker, which makes it look more realistic. This video has only shown a few uses of the graph editor, but if you'd really like to make some realistic animations, I can recommend trying out all the preset interpolation types and messing around with the modifiers to find out what they all do. If you've enjoyed this video and learned something from it, please consider giving it a like and sharing, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. If you'd like to request any kind of new videos or have any questions about this one, please comment below. Thanks for watching.